Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum dear students. Hope you all are fine. Today I am going to deliver a lecture based on the topic a drive in the motor car from Oxford Reading Circle and it is the chapter number 5. I am your teacher Maria Khakan. Before starting the chapter I want you all to know about the writer who has written this story. Roald Dahl who born in 1960 and died in 1990. Roald Dahl is the most accepted, popular and best-selling children's book author. He was born in Land of Wales in 1960. His father, Herald Dahl, was the co-owner of flourishing ship-broking business. His father died when Dahl was only four years old and three weeks later his sister, elder sister also died. The family had to sell their jewelry to pay for Dahl's schooling. When he was 13, he went to a public school called Repton. Athletic by nature, Dahl played football, squash and fives in school and had photography as his hobby. During his years in school, Cadbury, a chocolate company, would send boxes of new chocolates as samples. This made Dahl's dream of inventing a new chocolate bar that would draw the attention of Mr. Cadbury himself and this was the inspiration to write the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I think you all have watched that movie, isn't it? After school, Roald Dahl didn't go to the university but applied for a job at the Shell Company. He was sent to East Africa and got into exciting adventures, great heat, crocodiles, snakes and swaris, safaris. He learned to speak different languages. When World War II broke out, he went to Nairobi to join the Royal Air Force where he was a fighter pilot and shot down German planes. Once he got shot down himself, but six months later, he was flying again. When he returned to Washington in 1920, sorry, in 1942, he began his career as a writer in 1943, he published his first children's book, The Gremlins, with Walt Disney. And in 1945, his first book of short stories appeared in the United States. His years at public schools in Wales and England. The later described without nostalgia. He thought that adults did not understand children and his books reflected this. His books are mostly fantasy and full of thoughts. A frequent motif is that people are not what they appear to be. He said once about, uh, about his children's story, I make my point by exaggerating wildly. That's the only way to get through the true children. Dear students, this chapter is an excerpt from the book Boy, an autobiographical story about the author himself. What is an autobiography? While reading the story, you will come to know that it's not actually a story, it's an autobiography, a real story written by uh, this writer and taken from a uh, about that was written about his own life and what is autobiography an autobiography is a story about the life of the writer it is based on the fact but written in a story like fashion the writer is the central character and talks about their own life childhood family school friends work illness and so on And you can see that this story which you are going to read right now or basically an autobiography that was about the 
about the life of a writer who has written this but it's a short part of that writing okay uh, from his autobiography he has taken a short part of his story and he has presented in this book Dear students, what's your task is while reading this text, you have to underline the difficult words and write down their meanings to have easy understanding of the text. And later on, after reading the text, what you have to do? You have to write down an autobiography by yourself by keeping the following points in your mind. What are the points which you have focused? You have to imagine what are the things you would write about. Okay. You are the people who would mention it. Who are the people you are would mention it. Okay. Remember it is important to write about the bad things as well as the good things about yourself. Moreover, you must take care not to write something that would defame or embarrass another person. Okay. And the last point you have to keep in your mind while writing an autobiography is you have to list five people and five memorable incidents you would include in your autobiography. Okay, after doing it, you can share it to me. Let's start reading the text now. Open your books. Vocabulary box while reading the text will present over there. So must note them <clears throat> the weather was exceptionally mild at christmas holiday in one morning our whole family got ready to go for our first drive in the first motor car we had ever owned this new motor car was an enormous long black french automobile called a didian button which had a canvas roof which folded back. The driver was to be that 12 years older than my half-sister, now age 21. She had received two full half-hours lessons in driving from the man who delivered the car and in that enlightened year of 1925 this was considered quite sufficient. Nobody had to take a driving test. You were your own judge of competence. And as soon as you felt you were ready to go, off you, off you jolly well went. As we all climbed into the car, our excitement was so intense, we could, we could hardly bear it. How fast will it go? We cried out. Will it do 50 miles an hour? It will do 60, the ancient sister answer. Her tone was so confident. It should have scared us to death, but it did not. Oh, let's make it do 60, we shouted. Will you promise to take us up to 60? We shall probably go faster than that, the sister announced pulling on her driving gloves and tying a scarf over her head in the approved driving fashion of the period. The canvas hood had been folded back because of the mild weather, converting the car into a magnificent open trouser tour. Up front that were three bodies in all. The driver behind the wheel, my half-brother, aged 18, and one of my sister, aged 12. In the back seat, there were four more of us, my mother, aged 40, two small sister, aged 8 and 5, and myself, aged 9. Our machine possessed one very special feature, which I don't think you see on the cars of today. This was a second wind screen in the back solely to keep the breeze off the faces of the back seat passengers. 
when the hood was down it had a long central section and two little end sections that could be angled backward to deflect the wind we were all quivering with fear and joy as the driver let out the clutch and the great long black automobile leaned forward and stole into motion are you sure you know how to do it we shouted you do you know where the brakes are be quiet snapped the ancient sister i've got the concentrate down the drive we went and out into the village of landif itself fortunately there were very few vehicles on the roads in those days occasionally you met a small truck or a delivery van and now and again a private car but the danger of colliding with anything else was fairly remote so long as you kept the car on the road the splendid black tour crept slowly through the village with the driver pressing the rubber bulb of the horn every time we passed a human being whether it was the butcher boy on his bicycle or just a pedestrian strolling on the pavement soon we were entering a countryside of green fields and high hedges with not a soul in sight you don't you didn't think i could do it did you cried the ancient sister turning round and grinning at us all now keep your eyes on the road my mother said nervously go faster we shouted go on make her go faster put your foot down we are only doing 15 miles an hour spurred on by our shouts and taunts the ancient sister began to increase the speed the engine roared and the boy vibrated the driver was clutching the steering wheel as though it was the hair of a drowning man and we all watched the speed more speedometer needle creeping up to 20 then 25 then 30 they we were probably doing about 35 miles an hour when we came suddenly to a splash bend in the road the ancient sister never having been faced with a situation like this before shouted help and slammed on the brakes and swung the wheel wildly round the rear wheels locked and went into a fire side ways kick and then with a marvelous crunch of mud guards and metal we went crashing into the hatch the front passengers all shot through the front windscreen and the back passengers all shot through the back windscreen glass flew in all directions and so did we My brother and sister landed on the bonnet of the car someone else was catapulted out onto the car road and at least one small sister landed in the middle of a hatch but miraculously nobody was hurt very much except me my nose had been cut almost clean off my face as i went through the rear windscreen and now it was hanging on only by a single small thread of skin my mother grabbed a handkerchief from her purse she clapped the dangling nose back into place fast and held it there not a cottage or a person was in sight let alone a telephone some kind of bird started twittering in a tree further down the road otherwise all was silent my mother was leaning over me in the rear seat and saying lean back and keep your head still to the ancient sister she said can you get this thing going again The sister pressed the starter and to everyone's surprise the engine fired. Back it out of the hatch my mother said and hurry the sister had trouble finding reverse gear. 
the cocks were grinding against each other with a fearful noise. I've never actually driven it backwards, she admitted. Everyone, with the exception of the driver, my mother and me, was out of the car and standing on the road. The noise of the gear wheels grinding against each other with terrible was terrible. It sounded as if a lawn mower was being driven over rocks. The ancient sister was using bad words and going crimson in the face, but then my brother leaned hard. leaned his hat over the driver's over the driver's door and said don't you have to put your foot on the clutch the hearse driver depressed the clutch pedal and the gears meshed and one second later the great black beast leaped backwards out of the hedge and cleared across the road into the hedge on the other side Try to keep cool, my mother said. Go forward slowly. At last, the shattered motor car was driven out of the second hedge and stood sideways across the road. Jump back in the car, my mother cried. We are going to the doctor. There's glass all over the seats, thus they said. Never mind the glass, my mother said. We have got to get this boy to the doctor fast. The passengers crawled back into the car. The ancient sister managed to straighten the vehicle and get it point, pointed in the right direction. And then at last, the once, magnif- once magnificent automobile tottered down the highway and headed for Dr. D- Dunbar's surgery on Cathedral Road, Cardiff. I've never driven in a city, the ancient and trembling sister announced. You are about to do so, my mother said. Keep going, proceeding at no more than four miles and or all the way. We finally made it to Dr. Dumper's, Dum, Dunbar's house. I was hustled out of the car and in through the front door with my mother still holding the blood-stained handkerchief over my blood-stained nose. Good heavens, cried Dr. Dunbar. It's been cut clean off. It hurts, I moaned. He can't go round without a nose for the rest of his life. The doctor said to my mother, It looks as though he may have to. My mother said, Nonsense, the doctor told her. I shall see it on again. Can you do that? My mother asked him. I can try, he answered. I shall tape it on for now and I'll be up at your house with my ancient assistant very soon. Huge strips of sticking plaster was strapped across my face to hold the nose in position. Then I was led back to the car and we crawled the two miles home to Landruff. About an hour later, I found myself laying on the nursery table. Strong hands held me down. A mouse stuffed with cotton wool was clamped over my face. I saw a hand above me holding a bottle. White liquid was being poured onto the cotton wool inside the mask. I smelled the stickly stench of chloroform and ether. And a voice was saying, Breathe deeply, take some nice deep breaths. I fought fiercely to get off the table, but my shoulders were pinned down by the full weight of a large man. The hand that was holding the bottle above my face kept tilting it further forward and the white liquid draped and draped onto the cotton wool. Blood red circles began to appear before my eyes and the circles started to spin round until that they made a scarlet whirlpool with a deep black hole in the center. Miles away in the distance, a voice was saying, That's a good boy. We are nearly there now. Just close your eyes and go to sleep. I woke up in my own bed with my anxious mother sitting beside me, holding my hand. I didn't think you were ever going to come round, she said. You have been asleep for more than eight hours. Did Dr. Dumber see my news on again? I asked her. Yes, she said. Will it stay on? 
he says it will he how do you feel my darling sick i said after i had vomited into a small basin i felt a little better look under your pillow my mother said smile i turned and lifted a corner of my pillow and underneath it on the snow white sheet they are laying a beautiful golden sovereign with the head of king george v on its uppermost side that's for being brave my mother said you did very well well i'm proud of you that's all from this chapter i hope you all like the story now here comes some of the exercises so let's start doing the exercises your a exercise on page number 57 is about questions related to this chapter and your first question is why does the author say her tone was so confident it should have scared us to death but it didn't which previous comment about her driving does this really to the suggested answer is the author means to say that she should not have been so confident as she was really quite inexperienced and this foolish confidence of hers ought to have scared them this relates to the fact that she had received only two full half hour lessons in driving Your question number 2 is why does the author give us details about the second wind screen The author gives us details of the second wind screen because it was a special feature of the cars of that time that we do not get to see today Also that it was meant to keep the breeze of the faces of the back seat passengers when the hood was down Your question number 3 Why does the author refer to driver as the ancient sister? Is the sister really ancient? Dear students, please try to understand and write the answer by yourself and then compare it with the answer I'm going to give here. From the author author's perspective, perspective his sister's 21 years compared to his 9 years was a large gap. in age the sister is really not ancient he only felt so because she was too elder than his another sister your question number 4 the driver turns around to say you didn't think i could do it did you why does she ask this question what is the effect of this on the for me the mother the other passengers and the driver herself the suggested answer is the driver asked this question as she had moved past a passerby and vehicles and had become comfortable and confident as the area she was driving through then had no signs of people or vehicles the mother was nervous and said keep your eyes on the road The other passengers were excited and told her to go faster. Spurred by the shout and taunts, the driver began to increase the speed till the car's engine roared and its body vibrated. Your question number 5 is which comments in the story tell us that the driver was not an expert at driving? The driver had received only one hour of driving instructions. The driver did not know how to turn when confronted by a sharp bend in the road. She had trouble finding the reverse gear. These comments prove the driver's inexperience. Your question number 6 is how did the mother react during this crisis? What actions did she take to sort things out? The mother remained calm and collected and directed the car out of the hedge and the and to the doctors. Your question number 7. The author says strong hands held me down. Why was this necessary? How does his treatment then compare to treatment these days? The doctor had to make the author unconscious as 
so as to stretch his nose up. To administer the chloroform, they had to hold him down and stuff a mask with cotton wool over his face. If he had not held down, he may have pulled away the bottle with white liquid, that is chloroform, and prevented the doctor from completing the minor surgery. Nowadays, anesthesia is administered by injection. This takes only a few minutes to make a patient unconscious. Your question number 8. How were driving practices different back then? Highlight the parts of the story that illustrate that this difference. The suggested answer is speed limits were lower than today as 60 is a very high speed in this story. There were fewer vehicles on the road. Accidents were fewer. There were no seat belts as many of the passengers are thrown out of the car after the accident. Your question number 9 is, what can this story teach us about the road safety? Answer may vary. You can also write the answer by yourself. The suggested answer is, it can teach us to drive only after proper training and practice. We should drive at a responsible speed and without being distracted by passengers. Also, passengers should be quiet and should be quiet and should avoid to create in um, avoid creating a first reference to the context it's of exercise number b from your chapter you have to read these lines from the story then answer the questions in the line first line is fortunately there were very few vehicles on the roads in those days so dear students, what event is taking place and where is it taking place? Yes, the answer is, one morning during the Christmas holidays, the weather was mild. The whole family ready for the first drive in the first motor car they had ever owned. The event was the driving license the 20 years old sister had got after two full half hour driving lessons which was considered sufficient in those days. B part is, why is the word fortunately used? Since she had not had enough practice and it was her first attempt at driving out into the village of Landoff. Everyone was quivering with fear and joy. The word fortunately is used to indicate the good luck of inexperienced driver. The third part of this question is, what other vehicle might have been there on the roads at this time? The suggested answer is, maybe just a small truck or a van or occasionally a private car. The second line, back it out of the head, my mother said, and hurry. Related to this, the question is, what is in the head and why? One of the small sisters has landed in the middle of the head due to the accident. Why is it necessary to hurry? It is necessary to hurry because the son's nose has been cut quite badly and needs the attention of a doctor. Your third question is what the other vehicles might have been there on the road at this time? It is more complicated than it seems because the boy's nose is hanging only by a single thread of skin. Part C. Words and Meaning Question number one from this part is find two meanings in the dictionary for each of the following. Dear students, first open your dictionaries and find the meaning of the words of the following words. First one is stole. I have written the suggested answer but try to do it by yourself also. Stole scarf or muffler that is used as a noun and robbed 
that is used as a verb. Clutch, which means grab, that is used as a verb. And the, another meaning that is used as a noun is part of the card that needs to be pressed to change gears. Concentrate, it means focus, which is used as a verb when we write in a sentence and the another meaning is not dilute which is used as a noun pedestrian a person walking on foot used as a noun dull that is used as an adjective spurs which means stimulus used as a noun and the another meaning is urge which is used as a verb in a sentence Next word is rock, which means stone, that is used as a noun. Another meaning is move back and forth, which is used as a verb. From exercise C, there is another question. Find out what the following words mean and where they might be found on a vehicle. First one is break. These all things those students know, those who are, those who know that, uh, know the car properly and they know how to drive it. So you must know what is the purpose of a brake in a car. It's a device to slow down a vehicle found on the front and rear wheels of a car. Those students who are having car in their homes and those who know how to drive must know all these parts of the car. Okay, the second one is starter. That is device to start up the engine of a car and found below the motor. Exo. That is a rod that connects two front or rear wheels of the vehicles found below the body of the car. Hubcap. A protective cover for the wheel placed over the wheel on the outside. Exhaust. A system of pipes to carry harmful gases from the engine to outside of the car can be seen pro protruding near the bottom back of the car. Next one is fan belt that is used as a belt that causes different parts of the engine to move together found under the hood. The next one is radiator, a device that helps to cool the engine found under the hood. Next one is bonnet, a cover of the engine of a car found at the front of the car. Indicator, which is a device that gives information about speed, fuel, etc. found behind the steering wheel. Accelerator, a paddle to control the speed of a car found beneath the steering wheel. Then there comes the exercise D, language, in which what you have to do was from nouns. Here is a sentence from the story. Someone else was catapulted out onto the road. The verb catapulted comes from the noun catapult. What your task is, you have to make verb from these nouns and use them in sentences. I have mentioned the suggested answer, but try to do it by yourself too. First word is slung. Rahim slung his bag on his shoulder and ran off to play. Cannoned. She cannoned into her teacher as she ran down the corridor of her school. Gunned. He gunned the car engine and zoomed off down the road. Catch. Th the thresher's cat threw the fields as a hot knife through butter. Triggered. The small incident triggered a big debate in society. Knifed. In frustration at being rejected by the critics, the artist knifed through his painting. 
penalty. The soldiers were ordered to bayonet their way through the enemy ranks. Fire. The starter gun was fired and the athletes set off down the track. Your second part of exercise D is correct the mistakes in the following. These all are the sentences for which you have to correct the mistakes. So the suggested answers are two little and sections could be angle backwards to deflect the wind. My brother and sister landed on the bonnet of the car. Everyone with the exception of the driver, comma, many mother, my mother and me, comma, was out of the car. Students, be careful about the punctuation marks. In the statements, you have found extra punctuation marks were mentioned over there. Wrong words were used in the sentences. So, these are the corrected statements. So, be careful about the punctuation marks in the correction of the statements. The harassed driver was depressed, comma, the clutch pedal and the gear mashed, comma, and one second later, the great black beast leap backwards. Exercise E, in which you have to discuss and write, and your A part A is how do in accidents occur is it always the driver's fault discuss accidents on the road and how they occur it's just a general question which you can write by yourself also what i've written is very often accidents occur due to driver's fault at times they may occur due to an obstacle on the road or maybe due to a cyclist child or animal running across the road at times another car may try to speed or jump a red light. Poor lightning on the road may too be the cause of an accident. At times the brakes of a car may fail resulting in an accident. There are many different ways for having an accident. So what comes in your mind you can write it by yourself. So suggested answer can be accepted. Here's the end of the chapter. Hope you like it. If you find any difficulty, please ask from me. Thank you. Love face.